All right, so I'm having to do a screen recording with a phone, so this is not ideal, but this is gonna be how we install or download and install Hashcat. All right, first thing I need you to do, or you need to do, is download the thing called 7-Zip. So let's make sure we have 7-Zip installed on our machine here. I'm gonna go ahead, I do need the 64-bit one. I'm very excited here. Shouldn't take long. I'm gonna pop that in here. Try to make sure everything is visible on this little tiny screen, which is fine. Oops, don't do that. Come on. There we go. All right, so here's 7-Zip. I'm gonna execute that baby. Um, I've gotta allow this thing to have permissions. I'm gonna say yes. It's gonna do its install. We're done with that. So 7-Zip's now installed. Our next step, I might as well actually leave that open, but I'll close it up anyway. Our next step is to find Hashcat. So Hashcat's easy enough, Hashcat. And we're gonna go to Hashcat here, hashcat.net, boom. And it needs to open. Why are you taking so long? Come on, baby. There we go, we need a good solid click here. All right, we do want the binaries here, Hashcat binaries. And the one I need to do is just download it. This is going to be a seven zipped file. So you can see it says seven Z on it. That's why we downloaded seven zip to begin with. So we give that a few seconds and then we can go to that folder. So here's our, which folder are we in? We should be in the downloads folder here and there is Hashcat. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm right clicking it here. I'm gonna say 7-zip and I'm gonna go ahead and just do extract here. So that should not take especially too long. And we now have a folder somewhere on here that says 7-zip or Hashcat, there it is right there. So there's Hashcat. Now, just for, I don't know, whatever purposes we wanna know here, I'm put, gonna put this in the documents folder. I'm gonna drag that into documents and I'm gonna go into documents and that's a little thing. Oh, there's Lego creations. Anyway, now it's in here, it's a folder. I'm going to rename this. So this is gonna be hard to see, but I'm actually going down to the rename button. I just right clicked it and I'm hitting rename. I'm gonna rename it just hash cat. That's just for purposes of me being able to type it. So next up, I need a, a command prompt. So I'm gonna to go to my search bar. You can't really see me typing. I'm typing CMD though, and it's not being happy, CMD. There's our command prompt. So I'm gonna open that. I'll make it so we can see our command prompt here. There's our command prompt, okay? Hey, that's not my name. That's all right. I'm gonna to go to CD. I'm gonna to go to documents. All right, so now we're in documents. I can do a directory. And there is my Hashcat folder, and I can change to Hashcat. All right, once I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the DIR button. Let me shrink this up so you can make sure you see even the low command prompt. And there's my command prompt, and I can see in here like a bunch of files. Oh, poor Hashcat, where are we at? There it is. So interestingly, when you just download this, it has a sample. So example.dict is actually a dictionary we can use. I guess you can't see me scrolling. Let me move the scroll bar over so you can see me scroll. Example.dict is a dictionary we can use. And this example 0.hash is uh, MD5 hashes that we can use. So we are actually just gonna go ahead and use those. But let me show you what's in them. Okay. By the way, Hashcat is in this directory. There's hashcat.exe, and that'll be what actually runs whenever we do it. So I'm switching back to the file, uh, file manager. I'm gonna open Hashcat here. Sorry, my screen's jiggling a little bit because I've got my phone tripoded onto my, um, onto my desk. So I need example 0.hash and example.dict. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this one. So we're gonna hit open with, I'm gonna go ahead and pick notepad here. This is just so you can see it. Wow, that's big, but okay. This is a long list of passwords. I'm not gonna shrink the whole thing down. I'll just show you the top end. And here you can see, oops, I can't see the other side, so I need to scoot that over. 
Here you can see, here's a long list and it's just words, right? Sets of characters and this is a dictionary and this would be, if I'm gonna crack password, these are potential passwords that people might have used, okay? So this is example.dict, I'm gonna close that one. Example zero.hash is a list of hashes. I'm gonna open that with Notepad also, just so you can see it. And here you can see all these hashes in it. These are MD5 format and they are very exciting. So I'm gonna close this out. And then the fun thing about being a Windows user is I can just execute this. So let me bring it down to my folder and I can type hash cat, oops, hash cat. I already know that I need to do A0, which is a dictionary attack. I also know that I need to do M0, which is for MD5 hashes. Then I put the name of the hash file. So this is example zero dot H A S H. Then I put space and then I put the name of the dictionary. And so if I was downloading something from the internet, by the way, I would put them in this folder. I would just drop them into this hashcat folder and then they would be ready to go. It doesn't need to be like, I don't know, nothing fancy here. Or part of the reason I'm doing it this way is I don't wanna to have to type the full path to everything. Anyway, now I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna do some stuff. Stuff and stuff. There were a few warnings there and I'm just gonna Go by them. Not enough allocatable memory for this attack. Well, that's pretty annoying. Let me do another thing. If we can just force it. Let's see if we get anything going. No, it's not going to work. All right. Yours should work. This is not a great little computer, but let's just say yours should hopefully work. I'm going to really quickly also just show you another command here. The other command I want to do would be the A3 attack which is a brute force attack. And here, I'm, you don't need a dictionary, and somehow force didn't work anyway. And if I was gonna spend a lot of time on it, I would figure out why this computer isn't working. But um, this is actually a Mac computer running Windows, so I don't know why it's working. And I am not gonna update or try to figure it out because I've already tried enough on a virtual machine. So here we go, example.hash. And then here I need to put in a mask. So question mark L means lowercase character. And as many of those as I want to check is how many I would use. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think I want a seven and a dash I means to do the entire length of them. So increment means I start at one lowercase letter, two lowercase. And this didn't work before on my uh, thing, so we'll just, uh, hope probably this won't work either. It'll be funny if it does, won't it? Please be patient. No, no device memory. All right. But that is the command. All right. Now, like I said, if I was really into this, let me get into that. And another command you can try would be this, where you're going to go just with no, any, like no mask or anything. This will do a raw brute force. But of course it's not gonna work because device number one doesn't have enough allocatable memory. And we're very excited by this not working. And that is gonna be it. Thanks for watching.